uh, Ryan Osborne here with the Denver 7 Digital team, joined by Dr. Neil O'Connor, emergency uh, medicine physician with Health One. And we're going to talk with Neil about, uh, obviously, the coronavirus, two positive cases in Colorado uh, came out yesterday, but just sort of this issue in general, what uh, what people need to watch out for, what they should be concerned about, what they shouldn't be concerned about, because that's a big part of this, too. Correct. Uh, so I guess just first off, Dr. O'Connor, what is sort of... Uh, you know, we had the two positive cases here in the state yesterday, but what you know, what what should people be looking out for? I mean, does that change uh, having the two positive cases here in Colorado? Does that sort of change uh, the precautions? Or I'm sure it's you know, people still should just still be careful about uh, like with any with any virus, right? Like, what is what should they be looking out for? So this virus is is you know similar to cold viruses. It's, it's a coronavirus. It's it's slightly different in, in that it, it, there is definitely a, a greater illness associated with it, um, and symptoms can be very mild, cold-like symptoms, upper respiratory infection symptoms, to real uh, difficulty breathing, uh, requiring admission to the hospital. Um, so there's a, a large um, you know uh, spectrum of disease for this uh, novel virus. Most people will have just mild illness, uh, cold-like symptoms, sneeze, cough, uh, and maybe fever. Um, and I think the things to, those are the things to look out for. And I think the main issue is we really want to try to curb the spread of this virus as much as possible. And what's the best way to do that? What is the best way to prevent yourself, anyone, from, from being infected? So, uh, the, you know, general precautions are, if you know, avoid, you know, being around sick people. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's coughing, stay away from them. If you yourself are sick, you should not go to work. If you have to go out, you should wear a mask. Um, uh, but the, the CDC is recommending that people do self-quarantine if they have symptoms of, of uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do think that, uh, you know, avoiding sick people, washing your hands frequently, um, and, um, uh, you know, just general precautions like that are very important. We've seen in this case, and, and with the flu and other viruses, uh, elderly, older patients uh, may have underlying health right. conditions. Okay. That seems to be a, a, you know, a particular point of, of, of emphasis as far as precaution. What, what can that population do to prevent and also notice those signs early so they could get the help they need? Well, uh, so on the good news side is uh, this virus does not seem to affect children as much as influenza. So that's, that's uh, a benefit. Uh, it does affect older people and those especially with comorbidity. So this has been obviously an issue in Seattle with the outbreak at the, uh, at the nursing home. So uh, nursing homes are uh, obviously going to need to take extra precautions with hygiene, you know, quarantining uh, sick patients, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, again, in the general population, wh ho however old you are, um, it's really about uh, avoiding sick people, washing your hands, you know, just the general stuff that's recommended by CDC. Nothing, you know, really high tech at all. Mm -hmm. Having the two positive cases here in Colorado, that was probably inevitable. It Correct. seems like uh, eventually, you know, a as it continues to spread, I mean, you're going to see have cases pop up. Yes. How... I think one thing people might be concerned about going forward is is when does it get to the point where may have to stay home from work, may have to stay home from school. Where do you think we're at in that as far as taking that precaution and and you know not not panicking but also preparing for for situations like that. Again, going back to curbing the spread, I think we're already there. If you have symptoms, upper respiratory symptoms like this, you should stay home. Unfortunately, right now we do not have a large number of tests available for coronavirus in the state. Um, that will improve over time and hopefully within the next week to two weeks we'll be able to expand our testing so that people can get definitive results. Uh, right now there, there is a restriction um, on the number of tests available, uh, about 160 per day uh, according to the state health department. Uh, so now uh, tomorrow, for example, when I'm working in the emergency department, if I have a suspected case, I will have to work with the health department to decide if somebody's appropriate for uh, testing for coronavirus. And what is it like being in an emergency room at now? Because you, you probably have more and more people coming in. Uh, it's flu season, so they're going to have these similar symptoms. Correct. What's the protocol? I mean, what's the, for, for diagnosing and, and, and taking action? It's a great question. 
the as far as understand there's no specific treatment for this virus it's like any other virus and the only virus that we really have effective treatments for is influenza so it's what's called supportive care so if somebody needs oxygen or they need some other respiratory support we do that if they're dehydrated we can hydrate them they may if they're truly sick we may need to admit them to the hospital but by and large most people will have mild symptoms many may even be asymptomatic so what it's like in the ER is uh, right now I would say um, uh, everybody's being cautious but we're not panicking uh, we're just taking the same precautions that we would normally do uh, in any sort of viral outbreak so you will likely see if you do go to the emergency department, I think we need to talk about what would bring you to the ER, yeah. what, what, what symptoms you're having. Um, if you're having respiratory symptoms, you will be masked, you'll be screened for fever. Um, and if you screen positive for um, you know, travel, you know, shortness of breath, things like that, that put you at a higher risk for, getting, or for having this illness, you'll be sort of self, you know, put in either a negative airflow room or a private room to help spread that, you know, help reduce the spread of the virus within the ED. And then the providers are taking uh, precautions with personal uh, protection uh, using gloves and masks uh, and eye, wear, eye protection depending on the severity of the, of the illness for the patient. This virus, again, the symptoms are so similar to right. uh, either a, a bad cold or the flu. What is it about uh, this strain of the coronavirus that that does sort of take it to that next level, at least for you know the 15 to maybe 20 percent of people that have those more severe conditions. Yeah, I I, I suspect I, you know there's a lot more that is unknown about the virus yeah. than is known. We know that we know the sequence of it. Um, I don't know that we truly know the immunology of it, but but people with underlying illness appear to be the ones that are most susceptible. Um, you know, people with heart and lung issues. Um, what is the transformation from a mild symptom to severe, I think that, that has yet to be elucidated. So yeah. there's more, much more to learn about the virus. Someone in the comments just, uh, you know, they asked about, what about kids at school spreading the virus? I mean, that's gonna be, that's, that, that's probably the toughest spot to prevent. Absolutely. Um, and again, I, uh, fortunately, it seems as if this virus it, it affects kids much less than adults. So that's one, uh, very positive aspect of the of the uh, of the infection. Um, it really will be I, I, up to the uh, the health department and the school systems to decide. But certainly, if if, uh, if a, a child is having illness, upper respiratory symptoms, uh, we should be uh, kept at home. Mm -hmm. You know. And of course, spring break is coming up. Uh, a lot of spring vacations planned. Uh, it's it's hard to tell you know, how you can contract this virus as far as, you know, where you're traveling and, and definitely those specific areas where the outbreaks have been, uh, you know, it's, it's advised that to not travel there. Right. But what should people be uh, concerned or what should they consider as they uh, head into this, this travel season? That's a really interesting question. Um, uh, we had this discussion at my house today as we're planning on our daughter flying in from Florida uh, next week for spring break. Yeah. Um, and it's a, obviously it's a personal decision. I think what you're seeing, what I've heard, is that people are wiping down their seats. So they're bringing disinfectant wipes, so they're wiping down their seats. Uh, I think, uh, obviously, once you're on a plane, you're in close proximity to many people. So there is a potential increased risk for spread. Um, I, again, I think the whole concept of wearing a mask if you're asymptomatic is generally felt to be unhelpful. But I suspect you'll see more people on planes wearing masks and things like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, obviously, when you're in close contact uh, in a plane, if somebody's coughing uh, close to you, that's a risk factor for transmission. Yeah, Governor Polis yesterday made an interesting point when he's discussing the the patient who tested positive uh, that when he flew into DIA, he was not showing symptoms, right. so therefore he supposedly at a lower risk yep. for spreading it. Is, is that what you've seen or is that what you understand? That's it? my understanding based on C, uh, CDC guidance. And, and, and that's a very important because that really does affect the spread of a, of a virus, is how early in the, in the disease process are you symptomatic? Mm -hmm. And are you spreading the virus when you're asymptomatic? And what's fortunate about this uh, virus is it seems as if you are people who are most a symptom are most contagious when they are most symptomatic. So there doesn't appear to be a long period where the people are asymptomatic yet contagious. Yeah. So that will hopefully help limit the, the, the spread of this. 
the mortality rate, or at least the mortalities from coronavirus in China is what is pretty alarming to see some of those numbers. How important though is it to keep in perspective the different healthcare systems, you know, between from country, from one country to another, and, and how that can affect either the severity of the virus, the symptoms, or and, or, and also how it spreads. I mean, it's, it's I'm sure it's, it's different from, you know, right. every hospital you go to from country to country. Well, first, I think we have to understand that um, because testing is limited, we really don't know the scope of this yeah. virus. It may well be that uh, the mortality rate is a tenth of what we report in, in uh, China because not everybody got tested. People are, have, you know, you know, mild symptoms or asymptomatic. So we truly don't know the, the mortality. What we, we only know the mortality of the people who, who were diagnosed with it, and we were certainly not broadly testing. Or, and that's certainly the case right now in, in the United States. We just don't have enough tests available to test broadly. So we won't know that for a while. Um, to your point, um, you know, we have a very well-developed healthcare system in the United States, uh, and uh, so that obviously will help mitigate the, the, the mortality rates based on the, you know, the availability of, of, of advanced healthcare if, if needed. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of events and conferences, uh, travel policies that extend into mid-April. Will warmer weather, could that actually help, or do we just not know enough about um, we, this strain? Now? Right, we don't know the life cycle of the virus. I mean, basically, you know, with influenza, we have many, many decades of, of history of, you know, when it goes back to its, its you know, animal reservoir and when it affects humans. Uh, with, this, with this virus, we really, we, ha we don't know how long the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, sp uh, the infections will be going on and, you know, and how long it will remain in the animal reservoir and how likely it is to come back or not. So, uh, again, much is unknown about the, 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 this novel coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, someone else asked how long this virus uh, lasts on, on surfaces or I guess would be contagious on surfaces. Summit County yesterday when they had, you know, they, they released information today about the condo where the patient was staying and said, I think, I believe they said health officials, uh, said the virus wouldn't be contagious on surfaces after a point of about two hours is that that's the number that we've heard yeah. and and i think that that's probably pretty reasonable um, again i think um, you know from the healthcare setting if we have somebody with suspected coronavirus and they're in a room that we're, we're going to do the waiting but then we're going to do a, a a deep clean of that room as well so it's, i think there's there's two stages to that yes you want to wait Two hours is probably a reasonable, you know, if somebody sneezed on your coffee table, wait for a couple of hours, but then use some disinfecting wipes after that. Yeah. Anything else about this coronavirus that you've seen that really stands out to you, uh, working with it, maybe seeing people coming in with symptoms that it doesn't turn out to be, but like what, what stands out to you about I, this? You know, I, so far I've not diagnosed anybody with coronavirus, yeah. so I, I can't say that I have experience with it. I think what stands out to me, though, is is the there's a, a, a palpable anxiety about this infection, and I think that uh, you know panic doesn't make any situation better; it only makes it worse. So it, I think we need to be cautious. We need to be thoughtful about um, you know our actions if we have the, uh, presumed illness, um, and and do what we can you know as good citizens to try to to, to uh, curb the spread. Um, so that means if you're sick, stay at home. If you're going to go to your doctor, call them in ahead of time to let them know. Make sure that they have what you think you need, right? Mm -hmm. Don't go to a, a doctor's office thinking you're going to be tested for the coronavirus. They may not be able to do so. Yeah. Um, same at urgent care. Let, give them a heads up that you're coming in, you know, and they can guide you. And, and again, for the emergency department, uh, coming in for mild symptoms is, is unlikely to be a benefit to patients. Sure. All right, there's no specific treatment. We're not testing everybody. Uh, so um, uh, don't come to the ED with mild symptoms expecting to be tested because we have to test in conjunction with guidance from the state health department. So it's not guaranteed that you'll be tested if you come into the emergency department. Because if you just get everyone coming in with, I mean, majority right. of it, common cold, right. maybe flu, right. it just sort of... We it, would deplete our resources within a couple of hours. Yeah. Well, Dr. Neil O'Connor, thanks for stopping by, uh, you know, answering some questions about the coronavirus. Uh, we'll have more updates on this, you know, throughout the day on denver7.com. 
and uh, the DimmerChannel.com and on Dimmer 7 News. But, uh, but thanks again for stopping by, and uh, we'll uh, keep monitoring this as we go forward. So Thank you. It. Yes, yep. my pleasure.